Yakovlev Yak-3 World War II. The Yak-3 was the culmination of fighter development at Yakovlev and drew on research gleaned by the Soviet research establishments during the first two years of the Second World War. The Yakovlev Yak-3 was well-renowned for possessive and impressive rate of climb and unmatched maneuverability. The system appeared in 1944 and though it was eventually superseded by other more capable designs, many Yak-3 pilots still preferred these aircraft regardless. In the end, nearly 5,000 of the type would roll off Soviet assembly lines and onto war against the Luftwaffe. The design took the best features of the Yak-1, 7 and 9 and rolled them into a new lightweight fighter frame, with the aircraft first being put down on the Yakovlev OKB drawing boards in autumn 1942 and dubbed the Yak-1M. The new fighter had a smaller wing, both in span and area, as well as oil radiator intakes in the wing roots, replacing the chin-mounted intake on previous designs while the second Yak-1M prototype had plywood covering the rear fuselage instead of fabric, among other alterations. Armament was housed in the nose and through the propeller shaft of the aircraft, reducing weight in the wings and increasing the accuracy of the weapons. All of this resulted in a highly streamlined fighter, the prototype of which took flight in February 1943. After the manufacturer's testing, Yak-1M was passed to N2 VVS at the Soviet Air Force Research Institute for further testing, and the results were marked. It was found that the new aircraft was 20 to 25 km an hour faster than the production Yak-9 at all altitudes, outperforming the FW-190 up to 8,300 m and BF-109 to 5,700 m by nearly 50 km an hour and achieving a rate of climb to 5,000 m faster than any in-service fighter. The second prototype with minor alterations improved these figures still. The potential of the new fighter was plain to see and many high-ranking officials pushed for the type to be pressed into production. Production of the new type, redesignated Yak-3, began in the late 1943, with the initial batch completed in March 1944. Production was slow at first due to the prioritized production of existing Yakovlev fighters. Unit production was found to take two and a half times the man-hours of Yak-1 manufacture. The early production machines failed to reach the performance achieved by the prototype Yak-1Ms, an issue swiftly rectified by a push on quality standard in the plant. As such, deliveries of the Yak-3 only began in the late spring and early summer of 1944, but their presence was soon felt. In the field, the Yak-3 was simple and easily accessible to Soviet mechanics, and despite some undercarriage issues, by and large the rugged airframe proved its worth as the Russian air regiments advanced to new airstrips following the Red Army's offensive during the winter of 1944 and 1945. The Yak-3 was truly the better aircraft and first flew in 1943. The cockpit was mounted forward in the fuselage and provided the pilot a better view through its three-piece bubble canopy. Wings were slightly forward of their original placement in the Yak-1, yet the Yak-3 maintained the signature air scoop underneath the fuselage characteristic of the series. Armament consisted of one single 20mm SHVAK-type cannon firing through the propeller hub and an additional two 12.7 Berezin UBS-type heavy caliber machine guns in the upper fuselage sides over the engine. These machine guns were synchronized to fire through the spinning propeller. In combat, the Yak-3 proved its worth almost immediately as it arrived. It maintained a stellar kill-to-loss ratio over Luftwaffe fighters and held the upper hand in, um, in most engagements thanks to its inherent capabilities in a powerful armament. The addition of the Klimov VK-107 1700 horsepower engines upped the ante even further as now the Yak-3 was capable of improved top speeds reaching 450 miles per hour. Even when compared against the agile supermarine Spitfire, it is said that the Yak-3 would hold the advantage in a turning battle. Such was the might of this Yakovlev design. The type did have some limitations, however, including a relatively small fuel capacity that placed limitations on sortie lengths and could be particularly concerning during high-powered aerial engagements. Many pilots simply ran out of fuel and had to land in the countryside. The Yak also tended to shed its skin when put in a very high-speed dive. 
the first 200 production aircraft were fitted with a 20mm cannon firing through the propeller hub and a single 12.7mm UBS machine gun mounted in the nose, with the second added later in the aircraft's production run. Other models underwent numerous experimental armaments. The Yak-3K featured a 45mm NS-45 cannon in place of the 20mm and the Yak-3PD was modified with high altitude performance, neither of which was produced in great numbers. The Yak-3P saw an upgrade in armaments with three 20mm B-20 cannons and was the main production variant from August 1945. The Yak-3 boasts pretty lines, but with an underlying agricultural ruggedness. The wings are thin and short, with a 9.2 meter span offering excellent maneuverability. The oil cooler intakes are smartly blended into the wing root, leaving the underside sleeker than some fighters, with just the pair of outlets protruding, plus the larger central scoop which houses the radiator. The cockpit has a minimal framework and offers excellent visibility with the long nose tapering over the allison to the large spinner. Rearward of the cockpit, the fuselage is flat bottomed and sided and extends to a reasonably sized fin and rudder. The aircraft is sleek yet purposeful as a fighter should look. The first airplanes were delivered to the 91st Fighter Aviation Regiment in June 1944 and took part to the Lviv Sandomierz offensive shortly thereafter. The qualities of the Yak became immediately clear. The 91st had a large number of new pilots among its ranks, who had little or no combat experience. But the Yak-3's comparatively docile handling and exceptional performance fared the unit well. In just a month and a half, 431 combat sorties had been flown by the new Yak-3s, encompassing 5 air battles with 20 fighters and 3 Stukas down to the loss of just 2 of the Yaks. The verdict was unanimous among Russian pilots. The Yak-3 was superior to the Bf-109 and Fw-190 up to 5,000 meters. No combat took place higher during that period and could easily outperform both types in ascending and descending maneuvers and in the turn with the Yak being able to latch onto an Fw-90 within two full turns and a Bf-109 in three. One melee on July 16th saw the Russians outnumbered by German fighters 18 to 24 Yet the superiority of the new yaks enabled them to down 15 of the Luftwaffe for the loss of just a single yak and damage to another. The Yak-3 had been bloodied and it had made its mark. This type of supremacy came to typify the experience of units operating the high-performance Yak-9U and Yak-3 throughout the second half of 1944 and the remainder of the war in 1945 as Soviet forces closed in on Germany. The 1st Guards Fighter Aviation Division supported the Berlin Offensive, with 50 Yak-3s on strength undertaking 903 combat sorties. In 18 engagements, the Yaks shot down 20 Luftwaffe aircraft for the loss of 3 Yak-3s. Though it only flew in service during the latter part of the war, it is widely regarded as one of the finest fighters of the era, and the type's unit achievements support that claim. The Yak-3 was easy to maintain, successful in dogfights, rugged and an easy to handle aircraft. In 1944 delivery to the front line began. It flew many successful sorties, downing many German fighters while experiencing low losses. That same year, French fighter pilots employed the Yak-3 in nearly 100 victories against the Luftwaffe. Their unit was called the Normandy Neiman Group, who, as part of the Western Allied forces, supported Soviet forces until the end of the war in the European theater. It can be reaffirmed that Yakovlev Yak-3 is considered one of the best World War II fighters, invariably praised by those who flew it in combat for its remarkable performance. And you, what do you think of the Yakovlev Yak-3? Please comment below to discuss. As always, if you like this video, hit the like button to support us. Subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to be one of the first to see our latest videos. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.